What's going on guys? It's Tom Box. Welcome to MSD.TV. This is my personal ban list prediction for January 2020. Got 2020 vision on this one. Now before some of you guys get your feelings hurt and start rage typing in the comments section saying Oh my god, Tombox turned off his brain. Let me tell you guys how I approach this ban list. Okay, the TLDR version of my approach is that the current design space of Yu-Gi-Oh in terms of its meta is super limited. There's nothing that they can really introduce to kind of shake it up unless they power creep us a little bit more in terms of our card effects. If you look at the top tier decks from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, it's basically been the same decks over and over again since February. February, we all we got ourselves the Sal Mangre, we got Orcus that got finally got their Orcus Nightmare. This is even before Dingears and they were super powerful already, thanks to like weird combos with the uh, Phantom Knight engine. And then we have Thunder Dragons, which didn't take a hit in the past year, Guard Dragons, which was also introduced, and finally we have uh, Sky Striker that did not die whatsoever. Even taking multiple hits, still surviving and acting as a very functional engine for any deck that needed support. And those decks, they just stayed on top the entire time. Maybe they went up and down a little bit, you know, fighting for the top spot. But it's always been those guys. And everything else that was released was kind of pointless because they would have no impact. And within the Seth, there would be one or two cards that have heavy impact because they supported the stuff that was already in the meta. And anything new that was introduced, they all sank to the bottom or at most only floated to like a rogue tier and everything else just just died. And so I give you guys my ban list prediction for January 2020. Hopefully we can actually lower down both sides in control and combo so that the design space is now reopened for other strategies to be introduced. Because looking at the upcoming sets of Ignition Assault, it's not looking too good unless the ban list takes care of a couple of problems. Okay, whether you agree with me or disagree, leave it down in the comments section about my particular prediction choices. That's why I think these cards are on the chopping block, simply because they affected the design space. Starting off with the Hornet Drones. Hornet Drones you can consider like the Trickstar Light Stage. It's because Orcus killed it. Orcus would be the one to kill your Hornet Drones, Sky Striker players, because they are able to abuse your engine. Because if you don't want your engage to get hit, then just don't let other people play your engage. So let's take away the Hornet Drones. Hornet Drones has enabled a simple play of engage to lead to a monster plus a Widow Anchor for these Orcus players and it's very very difficult to deal with especially when they end on the IP Mascarena. With the IP Mascarena, I can't play because I summon a monster, you steal it, I summon another monster, you bounce it back into the deck. That's two interactions that were just basically free for you and everything else would be summon a monster, send it to the grave with, with Dingirzu. It's just that difficult or if you even have the counter trap up that's four cards out of the way and you it costs you almost nothing and that doesn't really set well sit well with me if you want to use your cards use your own cards with your ip mask arena so hornet drones the sky striker en engine in general probably should not be accessible for every other deck that's already been kind of proven with trickstar sky striker second card specifically towards orcus it was between babble and this card for me. All the other cards could be like, whatever. You're able to cycle everything because your whole engine, the whole playstyle is to cycle from banish to deck, deck to grave, grave to banish. It's always been that same loop over and over again. But what's the one card that really enabled them to do so? Their infinite version of Foolish Burial for any Dark Machine monster. And they use it once during their own turn and they use it once during your turn with Babble Up. Take away Babble, the whole deck is just garbage because they're not able to interact with you. They can't really outplay you and they just they just can't really establish a board anymore. And they also have the restriction of being under dark for the most case. If you take away Orchestrated Nightmare, you take away their ability to send a card to the grave of Yet Foolish Burial. So they can't send the Gizmek for uh, survivability. They can't send uh, Orca Symbol Skeleton simply because they have to find some other way to put it back in the graveyard rather than shuffle it back into the deck. And Orchestrated Nightmare also acts as a battle deterrent because if you try to swing into a monster and they have Babble up, then they'll just gain the attack and maybe your monster will die and they'll survive because they have the strongest monster on the field now. And one surviving turn is all they need to go into a Boral Sword and kill you. So that's why I believe this is the problem and uh, just to leave a little bit of playability left for the deck, we'll just leave the Dingirzo as is and we'll leave the Babel as is. And finally, Mystic Mine. Mystic Mine isn't something that everyone agrees with simply because, oh my god, you're taking away so much from Control Deck, but then looking at the future product coming out, a lot of them are kind of combo decks and a lot of them are also monster centric. And if you leave this card available, I don't think those decks are going to do very well unless you want more low tier trash coming out. I think this card 
has limited the comboing space. Like, I think if we're going to hit this card, we should always hit all the other combo decks with it so that we don't have, you know, any form of hand looping whatsoever. It's just that this card should probably uh, get hit in some way or form. I'm personally aiming for banning just because it doesn't let all the future combo decks come out. I'm looking at the future products already and I ate a Mystic Mind and I'm like, really? I have to go dig for a Twin Twister now just to deal with it? I think it should go now. It's either this card or we take away the metaverse. Either way. It should be something that you actively play, not something you can just bank on as a backup play. Okay, for the top tier stuff, the power level needs to get lowered down, similar to how like Dragon Rulers is so powerful they had to get rid of it so the older stuff can come back and get value. This is kind of the same deal, you can say. So Sky Striker first, looking at Ray. Sky Striker would get a playstyle shift anyway because they're getting their Scissor Cross, they're getting Rose, they're getting Zeke, and a lot of them are more active playstyles of Sky Striker. They're kind of more defensive spells, they're kind of more recovery based spells, and hitting Ray is kind of part of that. Because if you leave Ray in the equation, there's no real point playing Rose. You just play one copy and maybe you'll add an additional copy of the, the Scissor. It doesn't really warrant all that much, but if you hit the Ray, Ray is very sticky. If you try to crow it, and shark cannon it, or even call by the grave it, they'll, they'll just send the, their field spot to the grave and summon a new one, and by that time, call by the grave would eventually expire, and you're back in the same Sky Striker loop where if you try to break their board, you're just going to get minuses for yourself. They're gonna plus, they're gonna search free cards and keep themselves alive as they go. In that sense, I think it's time for Ray to get limited to one. I don't think she should get banned entirely. I think the, the cycling defensive part should still be there, but it should be something that you just answer once. And if you run out of resources to handle that, that shouldn't be an issue. You shouldn't be like, oh, I lost because they were able to uh, outmaneuver me at every point because they get an infinite resource versus me having limited resources to answer it. And besides, Rose will change the playstyle all entirely because Rose can summon herself out. Cross, uh, Scissor Cross can also uh, add the level force back to your hand so you can summon it again. So in that case, I think Sky Striker can still play, but it will still be a little bit slower in that regard. Then we have Thunder Dragon Colossus. Here's the problem with Thunder Dragon Colossus. If you have Thunder Dragon Colossus being a card, you're gonna have to do two things to the meta. Either you make things not searchable and instead they just play straight onto the field from the deck because you still need that level of consistency. Don't forget, you still have like a stack of cards that's your main deck. And if you're not able to search because this Colossus of a monster is on the field, then the only way to make those decks work is basically give them the orcas treatment. Send them straight from the deck to the graveyard, send them straight onto the field, place them onto the field, set them onto the field so that it doesn't, doesn't really like do anything, it bypasses it. But ultimately what that makes is that even Ash Blossom Joy Spring would be useless at some point. And we're back to the point where Yu-Gi-Oh is something that you sit and watch your opponent do their combo and you can't really do anything to disrupt them. You're using different cards, but maybe that's exactly what they want. If they want to do that, then they probably would wouldn't touch Colossus, then people will have to shift their building and their playstyle to be like, oh, I know the thing will come out and I'll answer it as we go, but we don't have that the kind of hand trap to answer the stuff as they go. So I don't know what you're thinking about this, but if you limit the Colossus, if they have the impermanence, they have the way to negate it, remove it, then the player should be rewarded with the ability to play. And for Thunder Dragon, but pure Thunder Dragon players, you're still able to use your, your Titan to pop cards, still disrupt your opponent. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. For Salamangrit, it was between Foxy and Spinny for me. I put Spinny because Spinny is kind of a free card that you can get back out of the grave, but I guess that doesn't have too much of an impact. Which would you prefer to hit in Salamangrit? Do they even deserve a hit? And if they do, which card would you hit? Because this was the biggest struggle for me. It was Spinny. Although I could have put Foxy in here, because spot Foxy can excavate a card, give you a plus. This one is just a bit more recurrable, but if you they mismanage it, then it's not as recurrable. So you guys let me know what you think about that. I think they still have a lot of level three options like Suchinoko, Jackalope. They probably still have Sea Archiver. A lot of level threes for them to kind of replace. As for the OTS, Ulti Syndrome, the Ulti Syndrome ban, I think is going to be Chaos Dragon Levy and Nier. Chaos Dragon Levy and Nier, Ugh, I really, I get that people really hate getting their cards ripped out of their hand and shoved back into their deck, and that's why this is put at one. And like the utility of this card is pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Like I ripped the card out of my opponent's hand, I send it back to the graveyard, add it back with Safer, summon it back out, and then overlay. Cool. That's a play I can accept. But I, what I don't accept is when they drop a second copy of Chaos Dragon Levy in here, and uh, 
<laughs> and then they use that one to attack and do all sorts of board breaking. It's a little bit ridiculous to me. I, let, I don't mind them recycling one copy of it and being smart with it, but if they're just like spamming Chaos Dragon Levy in here just to kill you, that doesn't sit well with me. And I know I'm guilty of doing that to a lot of people, but hey, I, I can admit that it doesn't feel nice to be on the receiving end of that either. And one Floodgate. There can be only one, because there can be only one. There should be only one of this Floodgate. This one shuts down a lot of the future options uh, for people to build decks. Because if you're playing a control deck, you just flip this, a lot of the decks can't play. I'm looking at Senka, and I'm like, they're all Beast Warriors. You just flip this on them, they just lose. Actually, they just lose. This does not allow for typing base archetypes to be built. So either Konami builds a bunch of new archetypes with all sorts of different typing mashed into it just to answer this, or they just put this down to one and perhaps come up with a new floodgate with a different kind of mechanic to deal with uh, limiting the summons of a lot of players. That's what I think. But because this card, it has been in the meta for some time now. It has limited a lot of people from playing. Some decks have abused it, like Sky Striker. Sky Striker actually abused most of the floodgating uh, options available. But that being said, I need we need to tone it down a little bit just so that other people can still play their game. Like, the worst feeling is you pop one, there can be only one, only for a second there can be only one to get flipped on you. And you're like, oh my god, I'm still stuck under this. I still can't play. And that kind of grind fest is... To me, not very fun. It actually caused a lot of people to just stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh! altogether because they got over floodgated. I know there's a couple cards I didn't mention, such as like, what about Nibiru? Should Nibiru get hit? What about Super Poly? That's a really annoying card that people can't really interact with. What about Guard Dragon LP? All valid statements. Well, if you guys think I missed something that should be in the balance or things that shouldn't be on this balance, leave it down in the comment section. I would love to hear your reasoning. But now let's time for a bit more fun. Let's look at stuff that can come back. For stuff that can come back, let's look at Tribe Infecting Virus. Putting it at one just for safety measures, but we don't even play Raigeki right now. So why are we bothering with tribe infecting virus? I find that kind of silly to be honest. Like why bother with this card? Okay, so this card definitely come back, but like the only thing that warrants it to be on a ban list, it's not once per turn and it blows up all the monsters. That's that's basically it, I, I suppose. Okay, for stuff going to two, everything going to two is just basically an upgrade. We have Gateway. Gateway is just there because Shogun came out and OCG has it a three. Didn't really do too much, not much impact. We can try to see it come back. And there's a lot of hand traps to handle Gateway. If Gateway ever comes back, it's going to shift the hand trap meta uh, in terms of, oh, people are going to see more Droll. We're going to see more Ghost Ogre. We're going to see more stuff to kind of just answer this problem. And as for board breaking, remember, we have like Nibiru. If they spam the board, just Nibiru the rest of it, it's like all gone all right so it's not too too big of an issue these days and if they create a unbreakable board you can use dark ruler no more to negate all the monsters and just break the rest of the board anyway so it doesn't seem all too bad these days another card that i think can come back ritual beast ulti canahawk i'm not looking at this card like just by itself because by itself it seems like you can summon a lot of cards it summons out two monsters onto the field they can spam a lot of cards it sure seems that way but if you look at all the cards that have been released so far it does make it hard for your opponent uh, to add cards from the deck to the hand if you have a Thunder Dragon Colossus on the field. And uh, that's one harsh limitation on them. That's one part of it anyway. And the other thing is we have enough hand traps to kind of answer most of these problems within the uh, ritual deck itself. So that being said, I think uh, we can put this card to two just to give it a test. Maybe it'll become annoying enough for people to like constantly spam it again, then sure, why not? Let's just put it back uh, where it belongs. And then there's also, this one was kind of interesting because I already thought about this before the OCG ban list. Draco Face Off, let people play with the Luster Pendulum engine again. It's not like they're doing that much. I mean, putting this card to one, it's, it seems a little pointless. It does give us a free dragon and it kind of does push it towards the guard dragon side not gonna lie but hey i don't see too much of a problem with having uh like a i guess a dragon engine for a pendulum once again and then let's look into stuff that can go back to three i'm not talking about diva too much because i don't think diva is actually gonna come come back in this one i wouldn't be surprised if they put diva to two and then to three just to support the new deep sea stuff and i potentially i think the deep sea stuff can do very well like every single time they release a water deck i think it usually does succeed for for some time and for stuff going to three 
we have, I think, Trickstar Light Stage. Let's be honest here. I think this can come back. Trickstars can come back. They didn't really do too much <laughs> in the last few meta. The only time it was used and to hit the top tier was because Orcus played it and they used it to go into like Nightmare Mermaid. Now that that's kind of gone, I think this card can come back. Just let the Trickstars have their field spell. Let them just still be a deck. And one that you guys might not agree with me, this is a personal... Okay, this is my wish list. Give me Dark Arm Dragon 3. We're not playing it at 2. We can search it now, even at 2. We can dump it to the graveyard, see for it back to our hand, or we can dump Destrudo into the graveyard and add to your hand. The biggest problem with Dark Arm Dragon right now is that you have to maintain the graveyard at exactly 3. And with the amount of disruption that your opponent has, either by Call by the Graveyard taking it away from us, or simply by just destroying a card or sending an additional monster to the graveyard, we can't manipulate the graveyard as much as we want. I want to see Dark Arm Dragon kind of make a playback again, being the tyrant that it was back in the Teladad days, back in the Return Dad days. That's something that, you know, could shift it up. And also being a Dark Dragon, it does fall under the same problem as Super Poly. Super Poly can just get rid of it as well, and then we don't even have the interaction. And right now, there's also no ignition priority for players. So I don't see like too much of an issue for Dark Arm Dragon. If Mystic Mind goes to zero, then Metaverse can come back to three. The only reason why Metaverse is limited is because Mystic Mind is still around. If Metaverse is around, then I think Mystic Mind shouldn't. If Mystic Mind's still around, then just get rid of the Metaverse altogether. People can still use Demise of the Land because the Demise of the Land is something that people trigger. And that's something I'm okay with. I'm not okay with someone just setting a card and then all of a sudden, right when the people need it the most, they just flip the Mystic Mind over simply through a metaverse. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? That just can't be right. That doesn't sit well with me. And because of that, I think it's either one of these two cards has to go. And I think Mystic Mind limits the design space of cards a lot more. A lot of these decks, I'm looking at their spell trap lineup, they don't exactly interact with the spells and traps very much. And if that's going to be the case, I don't think Mystic Mind should stay around for that. You're not going to let people play your product because all your old product is too good. And this whole ban list prediction is to tone down all the existing product to move things forward. Kind of like a rotation out of like all any of the other games, really. But that's all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, agree with me or disagree, leave a thumbs up. I know a lot of you guys are going to leave a thumbs down by dis from disagreement, but it is here to have a conversation with you guys. I don't mind listening to your opinion on various things, whether you be a casual player, a meta a player let me know down in the comment section guys i'm ready i bring it guys and i'll see you guys in the next one